so the topic allotted to me today was practical aspect of insulin pump adjustment till now we were listening about parts pieces aspects how it looks what were the guidelines but real insight i think so dr mayur thought let it be a practical one so practical never will be a theoretical one there will be calculations assumptions can never be a part of practical system to get through so i think so if all my colleagues they may just hope and excuse me if some calculations are misjudged and they can ask the questions in last so the objective of today's talk will be in this presentation you will get an important information on how to start a patient on insulin pump therapy at the end of this presentation you will know the initial setting needed for pump to start methods and formulas to calculate initial pump settings and you can also gain first experience by calculating initial pump settings for example which i have said moving forward pump specifically has to be understood by these few things that is total daily dose total daily basal dose basal rate per hour then total daily bolus dose which will be also having two important components in action we always use it when we are giving mdi or people keeping on insulin so insulin sensitivity factor we all know insulin to carb ratio we all know but what about pump what settings will be changed when we will converting our friend from mdi to insulin pump therapy time active insulin and blood glucose target in range these are some specific points so to start with pump in total dose pump total daily dose what it is comprising of it is comprising of total daily basal dose and total daily bolus dose now this bolus will be in turn will be calculated by help of insulin sensitivity factor and insulin carb carbohydrate ratio so total daily dose of insulin which will be required will be comprising of basal plus bolus both so how to calculate it i think so we all understand the basal basal is the insulin which is secreted all throughout the day and for bolus we have to see what breakfast lunch and dinner is being served in terms of carbohydrate calculation and accordingly the bolus correction and bolus is delivered so how to start with at least we should know when we are delivering uh, we are transferring patient from mdi it is important that he knows the use of insulin it is sometime that we are transitioning people direct on insulin pump when we are transiting people direct on insulin pump there the facility must be having a backup support with a diabetic educator insulin pump educator a proper qualified team which can take look over the sudden hypos or hypers and the anxious nature of people so this technology should be handed over to those people who have are having realistic approach while starting the dose we have to reduce the dose by 10 to 30% what i do in practical is i reduce by 20% suppose a person is taking 15 units in mdi i reduce by 20 units and start with 40 and then further we go on calculating so the total daily dose can also be calculated by the formula the injection dose multiplied by 0.7 to 0.9 that may be ranging for in difference with especially people having hypoglycemia or not then weight dose can also be generated for people whom we don't have exact value how much mdi they are using we can simply multiply by 0.5 and into the kg so the daily dose may be calculated now this daily dose which is which is comprising of basal dose and bolus dose specifically has to be calculated very properly so it has to be managed in two ways basal dose and bolus dose the basal will be comprising of 40 to 50% of the total daily dose and rest of them will be the bolus one so the calculations are to be calculated total daily basal will be multiplied the pump total total daily dose will be multiplied by 0.4 it or, or 0.5 it will be total daily basal and the rest of it that is total daily dose minus by total daily basal will be the bolus one now basal rate is specifically basal rate can be programmed to increase or decrease at the different time during the day to match the patient's diurnal variations and mind you it can be adjusted every 30 minutes so can you imagine 48 
basal rates can be managed with this insulin pump. So definitely this insulin pump technology is going to mimic the natural which, uh, which Dr. Jyoti Dev sir was calling. The future is of bionic pancreas where glucagon and insulin, both reservoirs are being used. And at a time, the things can be completely automated. Now, purpose for basal insulin rate are given to match and cover endogenous hepatic glucose production. The goal was to maintain glycemic stability during the fasting states, during sleep and between meals. An advantage for this basal rate allows lifestyle flexibility, sleep late, eat late, skip meal, and then still managing the glycemic controls. So this is the beautiful nature of basal. Now, basal specifically, what were the researches tell? In 2005, it was published that approximately it is possible to meet the basal insulin requirement with single rate or multiple uh, basal rates. So it is approximately five basal rates. I always suggest to be sometimes when there is a hypoglycemia due to exercise, sometimes the dawn phenomena, sometimes you are late at night, your supper is not being served or you are in late at night awakening. There the flexibility of basal rate reduction can be they are to prevent hypoglycemia. Now we have new pumps, specifically this 6, 740G. It is automatically calculating and these all insulin sensitivity factor, carbohydrate ratio, these are automatically corrected, but you have to feed on the first time. So this mandatory calculation of carbohydrate ratio cannot be skipped whatever model pump is being used. These are two basic elements which we should explain to our friends in a practical approach which we are learning today. The number of carb and uh, carb grams or exchange covered by one unit of insulin required is known as insulin to carb ratio. We all know the definitions. How to calculate in respect to pump? We have to multiply it by 1.2. Suppose one unit of insulin is managing 10 carbohydrates. So you have to multiply it by 1.2. And when we are starting pump setting, it will be one, it, it will be 12. So one unit of insulin will be managing 12. So definitely if you don't have your, your predicted ICR uh, values in, in MDI, you can directly go with the formula 500 divided by total pump daily, daily dose. So you can get insulin carbohydrate ratio. Now we will talk about insulin sensitivity factor. These are, these are some small brushing ups, which because it has to be taught in practical respect to the person who is using pump. If it is not done, the assumption can never be exempted and we cannot get the exact values in automatic pumps also. So pre-pump insulin sensitivity factor divided by the, multiplied by the same 1.2, you will get the pump sensitivity factor, insulin sensitivity factor. Or if it is not available in MDI, then the same formula. We will divide 1800 by the total daily dose and we can get the insulin sensitivity factor. Now the important thing is these guidelines for setting the target range, specifically target rate setting guidelines, normal awareness, 90 to 100, then hypo, uh, who, who have hypos, unawareness, 100 to 120, and nighttime, 110 to 130. In pregnancy, if you are using insulin pump, 80 to 90 and 90 to 90 mg per day. So definitely the targets have to be set and accordingly bolus wizards can be used. Bolus wizards are automated systems which are available on the advanced pumps which use the AI intelligence and algorithm to manage the hypos and hypers as well. If you miss one bolus also, the same way algorithm design will try to judge and will inject the insulin. Now, above range, according to the above range, if suppose the value is 160, so the correction will be 1.3, which has to be given for managing this. And below ranges, then you have to suppose it is 70, then 0.4 units can be subtracted from the meal bolus. The same way, if blood glucose goes down, you have to manage the hypoglycemia very sincerely. And you should not replace it by any type of other carbohydrate, only manage it by glucose. Now, it is very important from over here if you want to understand the practical guidelines. So, I have used a patient system to demonstrate the dose calculation and initiation. Asha is a patient, she is 14 year old female, type 1 diabetic, HbA1c 8.2. With treatment hypoglycemia, she is currently using insulin rapid acting, that is 646 breakfast, lunch, dinner, and morning emily non-acting insulin. Total insulin consumption is 30 units. So her insulin sensitivity factor will be 1 is to 30 and her car ratio will be 1 is to 20. And when we will put it into the formula, now each and every person who is listening, a beginner or something, or any, any person can take the snapshot of this slide so that you can use these, cal these are the only calculations in insulin or insulin pump therapy all throughout the world. So in pump, 
daily doses can be calculated i think for some some uh, some fonts are overlap but if you put the exact values you can see the by weight the total daily, uh, daily dose comes to be 220 uh, 22.5 and with this it is 24 for asha then when we go for total daily uh, basal rate it is 9.2 on the formula then we go with the specifically total daily boluses it definitely when we are going to divide 13.8 for further three times we can specifically rotate with three meals how we can adjust then carb specifically insulin to carb ratio was calculated and that also is similar from the two both formula and the same way insulin sensitivity factor if it is available for the pre then you can go with specific if not then you can calculate by dividing from 1800 so these were some formulas but now from the important things role of physician what is our role to insulin dose adjustment basal rate testing bolus type guidance correction formulas car factor calculation avoiding over correction by hyper and hypos pump and exercise have to be explained pump and sickness have to be explained cannula site examination has to be done basal three things basic three things which we should look in pump is basal review bolus history and priming history of that person five principles to be remembered for successful people every meal to bolus has to be corrected choose right bolus type keep 3 hours or more gap between boluses avoid frequent correction and thus insulin tracking and treat hypoglycemia only by glucose don't supplement any type of diet and don't suggest anything because type 1 people have to be managed very nicely then patient follow five rule of success 72 hours the cannula should be changed don't use more than that rotate cannula sites smtg has to be done and each meal has to be covered by carb calculations never suspend pump for more than one hours with this as time is always a limitation but science has to flow forward na ko to jano shakkar se zyada meethi hai zindagi check to know life thank you